My name is Ruben Ulises Rodriguez Montoya, and this is Exitu Canis Latrans. I am a multidisciplinary artist from the Southwest. I consider myself a cuenta cuentos, somebody who likes to tell stories, and I do so with sculpture and installation. The title of this exhibition is a spell, Exitu Canis Latrans, Exitu Canis Latrans. Exitu is a term for when a species is no longer able to sustain itself within its ecosystem. Environmentalists bring the species into a different protected environment so it can live. Canis latrans means coyote in Latin, which alludes to both the intelligent and highly adaptable canine whose mythology has been misconstrued by ranchers wishing to eradicate it from its ecosystem, but also in its metaphor the coyote guides migrants across the border. Therefore, the coyote is a threshold between the animal and the human. To transform into a coyote is to coyotear. The red 1997 Ford Aerostar used to cross somebody through the Juarez border, coyotear. The cousin who borrows a passport to enter the United States, coyotear. The abuelita's house that becomes a den the family hides in after crossing, coyotear. The whole family pitching in to cross somebody across the border, coyotear. The work then expands on the notion of coyotear. It is a shape-shifting. It is becoming. It is unbecoming. It is nawalismo. Nawales which are magical beings that can shapeshift from human to animal, like vampires, for example, are beings that have lived inside my imagination since I was a young boy. With their magic, their powers, I have been able to pierce the veil of hegemonic structures of how to be. Nawales live among me. Their mythologies coexist in the same landscape as I am living. But at the same time, I grew up with the pop culture mythologies of the West. Star Wars, Pokemon, and Sailor Moon dubbed in Spanish. I titled this work, A Being Mistakenly Called La Nave de Kylo Ren, as a way to think about how Western culture permeates, invades, and erases the archetypes and visual metaphors that are already present in our non-Western cultures. Thinking about kids naming this creature by watching too much Star Wars and never having been taught the name of the monsters that live in around them. Not even knowing its mythology that La Nave de Kylo Ren hunts small snails, lives inside an underground den filled with motor oil, or that it only hunts for blood when Halley's Comet is at its closest convergence to the Earth. The Nahualitic creatures that I'm making are a result of growing up in close proximity to toxicity. Imagining that they too inhaled landfill fumes of where I grew up. The installation of Tlatlepuchi, a Mexican vampire that can turn into a bat in mist, is a visual of what a corrupted magical body would look like as its mist form coils with landfill fumes to create an altered body. The story that I've created for her is a prequel. What would it look like for a vampire to cross the US-Mexico border in a contemporary time? Tlatlepuchi is a vampire born before linear time when blood sacrifice was a ritual that gave pulse to the cosmos and jade pearls dangled on the chest of those said to rule the center of the universe. She hunts only those that cause harm by cutting her finger to draw out blood, placing it on the ground and feeding her blood to a rhizomatic network of mycelium that spreads for hundreds of kilometers all over the soil. In this symbiosis, the mycelium in turn leads her to where it feels Tlalepuchi's victim's feet pressing above its system of tangled tendrils above the ground. Once the prey is located by the mycelium, she turns into a bat to use echolocation and flies over the swooshing canopy of trees. Moments before the skin of her victim rapture and the blood vessels turn into a current of bloodletting that falls down to the ground for the mycelium to also feast in. 
Tlalepuchi turns into a mist to quickly and privately without any recording enmesh its prey. Hearing over an old radio on a house a few kilometers away, the news that Mexico only sends its bad hombres, its rapists, and individuals that commit crime to America, Tlatlepuchi decides to head to the USA, under the impression that her prey, those that cause harm, have moved up north. Upon reaching Ciudad Juarez, she's faced with a barrier that in order to enter a space, as a vampire, she must be invited in, so she hires a coyote to smuggle her in. Tlatle Pucci then becomes a fine mist and transforms into what looks like a vaping cloud a millennial might have ebbed out of his mouth. The coyote uses both of his hands to gather the fine mist and places it inside the styrofoam. Once the 18-wheeler containing Tlatle Pucci arrives on the other side, she edges herself out of the latched door of the trailer as a fine and hazy film of pearly mist. So dense, it immediately falls down to the ground. She spreads out as nothing but colorless vapor into the empty solace of the desert. Wisps of herself rise up into the morning night sky that will soon be shrouded by the sun. At this hour, the star-speckled sky is reserved for those who clean subways and office buildings ahead of the bustle of cars and sounds of coffee dripping into containers they will soon clean out of the way.